I, in lieu of Ashley Lincoln being here, I will call this meeting to order. It is 5.06. And this is the meeting of the Randolph Technical Career Center Advisory Board. And um, so we have some guests here today. So John, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. And um, I guess, are there any petitions? Hearing none, we'll move forward. Uh, I wanted to start by talking a little bit about facilities. Every meeting I tend to do this, um, but right now we are gearing up for the summer work season where some of these facilities things really can happen when kids aren't in the classroom. Um, so what I have here in your documentation is just what the teachers have requested in different spaces. I think what you're going to see if you look this over um, more closely is that our heavy shops, as I've mentioned I think before, are in serious need of some tender loving care um, in the form of pretty much gutting them, new wiring, new ventilation. Um, paint on the walls, ceiling tiles, either out or replaced. So a pretty significant um, project. And that's in three of our spaces, construction trades, diesel technology, and diversified ag. Uh, but most importantly, construction trades is a priority because right now they do not have a classroom. So we want to work with that room and make sure that we get them a classroom space. Um, currently, there is a classroom that's available, but next year, if the budget goes through and, and we get our additional math teacher, that classroom will be the second math teacher's classroom. So, um, that's the need there. Um, there's also a need for us to look at our bathrooms. I know that that's a topic that's come up, I think, across the district. Right now, we have one boys' room with well, I don't know, two stalls maybe? One stall, one, one urinal. Stall, one urinal. And then we have a girls room with three stalls and then a single stall bathroom up the hall. Um, and it's just not enough with our growing numbers and um, just to make it more gender neutral, I really am hoping that we can take our two big bathrooms and divide each of them into three single stall bathrooms. Um, I have kind of a plan of how that would happen. It does mean, again, a pretty significant a reconstruction because those are cinder block walls so we're gonna have to do some some work there um, but I think it's not impossible um, and then the other thing is to actually create a nurse's office right now um, well historically RTCC has always sent students to RU um, if there was a need for a nurse but um, we in the last two three years have been fortunate enough to have a nurse but we really haven't had a space we've kind of made do with a space um, but there's no water in there there's no bathrooms it's really not it's got carpet in it which you really don't want in a nurse's room um, so all of those pieces so we would like to renovate what is currently an underutilized staff room and make it into a, a nurse's station <coughs> and it would also have the water that's necessary and the tile floors so those are kind of like the the big ones, but the rest are like, uh, you know, pipe dream wishes um, on the on the list. So I just wanted you to have what needs to happen. Um, any questions on facilities? What's the timeline on these? Well, these so, are, these so not all of these. I can guarantee you, none, not all of these are going to happen this year. Um, I mean, I would love for them to, but it's we don't have the funding to do that. We have some reserve funds that well, I don't know if we call them that. I think that's what we call them. It's a little different than the high school, sure. um, but not enough to to do all of these projects by any means. So I think it's probably going to have to happen over the course of two to three years. Okay. I, the reason for the question is just this overall inf question about the infrastructure of both the high school mm -hmm. and it being at the end of its use and whether yeah. we're. And, w and whether it's worthwhile to put the money into it. Yeah. I, I know, and it's a question I think we all have to ask, but I think the reality is even if we were in a situation where we are going to build a new school, that's gonna be at least five years. And in those five years, we still have to utilize this space. Sure. So I feel for that reason alone, it's worth it. Okay. Yep. Um, 
Good question. Thank you. I have a question. How the um, does it work similar to um, requests for like this high school and repairs and that sense where you have to approve it a year ahead for the budget or is it something we would have to yes if we wanted to build this into the budget we could uh -huh. um we've already and we'll be talking about this a little bit down in the agenda although i was hoping lane was going to be here to to talk to some of this but i can certainly talk to it the tuition has increased this year um, that's to accommodate a couple of things one uh, a larger student body um, two is an additional math teacher and then the third would be to pull the uh, dental instructor back into the budget. So, you know, when we start doing those things, it doesn't leave a lot of room to add in repairs and facilities work. Um, not without the taxpayers saying, yeah, saying no, no way, Jose. Um, so, so that's something that we're going to have to think about, though, long term, because I, I know that the state is looking at governance structures for technical schools. They're also looking at funding structures right now, as I've mentioned probably at every meeting since I've been in this position. Currently, the system is such that the money follows the child. So that means that when a kid from RU, for example, comes to the tech center, that money comes to us. And so that creates a, a barrier for sending schools to want to send kids to us um, and they should have access but it's hard I get it you know these are small schools they can't run their budget if we're pulling the funds away from them so um, hopefully the legislature will come up with some solution that's good for technical schools and good for high schools um, I'm really hopeful about that I don't know if that answered the question totally what was the what? <laughs> I don't know. I think it was I, a, how it gets budgeted in. So, yeah. yeah so, it, it would have to be budgeted in, but a tuition, I guess bottom line was, uh -huh. my point I was trying to make, I think, is that, you know, we really, at this moment, it's tough to raise the tuition rate too much. Right. That's what I think I'm getting at. So, okay. So, we, we have to So, you're looking at slowly. other avenues to fund the... Yeah. But, but if it's funded out of reserves, that would have been in last year's budget, right? Well, what happens, so the way technical centers budgets work, we have to spend, you know, we, we make a, our best get, guest budget, we plan our tuition, and then when our budget comes to the end of the year, we have to be within 3% of what we budgeted. Mm -hmm. If we're over, we're, we're, we're over. We don't ask schools for more. If we're over 3% more, then we ask them for more. But if we, let's say, <coughs> didn't spend 6%, 3% would go back to the partner schools. We, don't, we only can keep 3%. Oh, okay. So it's kind of this weird, I don't know, thing. So that's where the reserve funds come from over probably many, many years. I don't, I don't know how long um, it's taken to just build what little reserve we have. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions around facilities? All right. This might be a good time for me just to mention kind of an aside we're looking at our vehicles right now. RTCC has quite a few vehicles, um, which I know is not typical for many schools, but um, in our case, it's integral to our programming because kids are quite often going off-site um, to do work. They're also doing work right here on our property. So um, one of the things that we're looking at and hoping for your blessing is to get a little bit of the funding from the reserve fund to replace one of our trucks and dump trailer. Um, so we, we'd be replacing a vehicle and a, a worn-out trailer that's no longer roadworthy um, with one vehicle with a dump body. And so I'm hoping if you all give me your blessing, um, I'd like to move forward with that. I guess I would need a motion. I'll, I'll move. I second. Cool. Do you know the cost? 20000 I think, is what it's going to cost. And I think the reserves, that's after our trade-in and um, sale of the trailer, who, someone who just wants to have it on the farm, not gonna go on the road. Um, so I, I think that's pretty reasonable for, for what we're getting. There is a, we could go with a state contract and get a new one, um, but the state contracts don't come out, I don't think, until April, and then you're in a waiting game having ordered it, which puts us at risk of not having what we need in the fall. 
Um, there is also one on the lot in mm, Montpelier, um, but the cost of that is going to cost us 45000 So my recommendation is to go with the used one that we can get in St. Albans. It's low mileage, and it will meet our needs. So thank you. So yeah, hearing 20000 seems reasonable for a truck with a dumb body. Perfect. So with that, thank you for your approval on that. Um, current enrollment. No, recruitment season. There's a motion, right? So we have a motion, we have a second. Oh, do we need to vote? We need to vote. Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> yes, we do need to vote. Thank All you. those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. Approved. Thank you. <clears throat> so the recruitment season, at this point, um, acceptance letters and waitlist letters uh, and ineligibility letters all went out on February 1st and um, that's for the first round of applications so those were due on December 15th what happens now is those waitlist and those ineligible kiddos have an opportunity to appeal so hopefully the letter outlines some of the things that are needed and they can look for evidence to show that they've made improvements in those areas and then we can reconsider their application in the um, at the March 15th deadline but also we'll have a second round of applicants that just didn't do it the first time applying for the March 15th application date um, so we're well into that our enrollment as of right now for next year we have accepted 103 students um, 28 were found ineligible at this time and that was for various reasons it might be that the counselors didn't provide everything we needed you know so we're a bunch of reasons for those um, six were incomplete meaning we were waiting on counselors at that time two were complete means we were waiting on instructors at that time and 18 are waitlisted um, for again various reasons so I think all of our programs are looking pretty healthy. I think we've got to do some work recruiting for construction trades. Um, criminal justice, probably could use a few more. Culinary arts, although that, that number is incorrect, I added four, so there's actually six in culinary at this point. Um, but most of the programs are five or six or above. Uh, with digital film being the one that is most sought after this year. Um, so that's pretty cool because that's a program that we revived if you recall <laughs> it was we had two art programs that when I started here and we let the graphic arts program go to um, have one program focused on the arts and that's worked really well and it helps that we have a really dynamic teacher as well um, so any questions on enrollment I have one more thing I could say in terms of which schools um, how many numbers of applicants from each school sometimes that's nice to hear and, and understand we had 68 applicants from RUHS we had 14 applicants from Northfield we had 18 applicants from White River Valley we had 13 applicants from other schools which include like U32 Montpelier and those are for the programs that are not offered at CVCC so um, like dental assisting for example is growing already um, we had Williamstown 41 and Spalding High School had 11 this year so. do students still go for two years if they want to absolutely do they reapply or do they like they, have a they do have to reapply every okay. every okay. year um, so it's based on you know how that how their year went if it's a fit because sometimes kids will be in a program and it's kind of clear by the end of the year that it's not really where their strength is or there's something else they're interested in so a lot of kids will even change programs okay. um, over the course of time so. but those kids that stay in the same program have the opportunity to go out on co-op which means that for part of their work part of their week they're out working um, which is great so do you feel like you're getting a good amount of students who are coming back for a second year absolutely okay. I think most of most, most of, them. of them yeah yeah that's good yeah. <coughs> just just a question on understanding the number so yep. the 103 is the is the 6 2 and 18 underneath the 28 is, or is that the explanation of the 28 I mean it's too short but I mean no those are, are those are different numbers different so those numbers are, yes really. those are ones that haven't been 
they're either not accepted, they're on a wait list, or they just haven't been processed yet. So then how does, like, for instance, the 18 wait listed mm -hmm. correspond to the wait listed in the table? Oh, is it so, okay, yes. Let me explain this table. So this is directly from our enroll track system, and it gets really wonky because it will say that, let's say I placed a student in their first choice program, and their second choice program, it will show them as waitlisted in there. So, oh, okay. so don't, I wouldn't even look at those numbers as okay. helpful because they're really the not. One, the ones in the group. The waitlist, okay. yeah. I think so it's almost creating another it, person. It's kind of confusing, yeah. yeah. So, so I would just not, not even look at that. The best one to look at would be the applicants. That means, you know, whether it was first or second choice, um, those folks gotcha. applied for that program. And then you can divide it by which one was first choice and which one was second choice. Good questions. Anybody have any other questions about enrollment? Lane, you're right on time. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to apologize. I had a sick wife and sick kid. We're, oh, yeah. we're so. going to go over the budget next. And I was kind of hoping you were going to be here for that part. So that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, what was your name? I just want Matt, to add it. sorry. No, it's okay. I, I should Thank know you, you by now. Uh, probably not. It's the first one. <laughs> yeah, it is. I skipped well, all the other tried, ones. He tried to come to one, but it came right yeah. as it ended. I've been on travel right. every single week. You guys. That's right. You came, like, right as we were walking out. I remember now. So we'll move on to uh, the next item on our agenda is next year's budget. And so the first bullet point is improvement plan for academics. And one of the, well, there's two things of note with this. One is that the Perkins plan requires us to put some funding into our academics because of the test scores that we're seeing right now, which I think is typical across the state. I don't think that's unique to us um, post-COVID. And so this year we're hoping to add the math teacher so that we have two math teachers and we can differentiate our learning a little bit more because it's really incredibly hard um, the way it's structured this year for the teacher to differentiate when there's such varying levels of ability um, within each class. So that's going to be awesome and really helpful. Hoping that next year that we could potentially add an English teacher as well so that we can again dive deeper and look at um, a more structured way of teaching where kids are getting the skills that they need. So. Uh, tuition increase. Um, yeah. What's the ratio for uh, teacher to student in the English mm -hmm. arena currently? Uh, do you mean well, entirely? Absolutely ridiculous and horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Would that's you the like reason. the, the honest reason. number is a, yeah 140? How many kids do we have? 140. Five. 145 yes. one yep so is she or he teaching all seven blocks there or? so our schedule is a little bit different the okay. way we have it is um, they're divided they go into English and humanities by program mm -hmm. and they have that once in the morning one day a week once in the afternoon one day a week so that and we have to build 13 programs into that schedule so um, it's not enough. Yeah. It's not enough. Yeah, and uh, part of the issue is, and you know, hopefully, you know, the legislature, you know, being able to talk to the legislators tonight a little bit, is this idea of um, potentially changing tech education funding, because um, we're a small district in terms of you know our enrollments at, at our tech center. Mm -hmm. Um, compared to some of the larger tech centers out there, but there's, there's this need for this, this core academic piece to be provided to the students. Um, but if you look at our tuitions, you see what the addition of that one additional math teacher did, right? We went from about 18,000 to 22,000 tuition ones. Yeah. Um, because it's such a small budget, uh, uh, one person increase like that is huge. You know, if we tried to do, I forgot what it was going to be if we had uh, oh, two, it was either 24, or, yeah. yeah, it was in, in that range. And so, you know, I was trying to find that balance. And one of the things that's hurt us for the last couple of years at the Technical Center is, um, and I think it was intended to be a benefit in and 10 years ago when enrollments were declining across the state, um, is they kind of changed the funding piece so that 
uh, funding at a tech center was based upon a three-year average. So what would happen is as the student enrollment went down, it would take a little while for the, the average number of students to go down as well, and the funding is based upon the average number of students. And so it was really helpful um, to districts as enrollments went down. But in our case, like we had one year where it jumped from one year 127 students to 160. And so, you know, we're providing services to 160 students, but only being given the financial benefit of 120 some odd. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you can't do that. Um, and it, it's because that lag, that three year lag works in reverse as well. And so for districts like ours, whose enrollments have, have either stayed steady or gone up and stayed steady, um, it's, it's, it's had a negative impact. Um, and we do worry about, you know, trying to keep our tuition rates in, in line with the other tech centers. We're a little bit different. We're a full day program yep. um, compared to most tech centers that are half day. So we are offering a considerably, considerably more um, uh, to the students and to the, the schools that send their students here. Um, but if you look across the state, you know, we're, next year we are certainly not the highest tuition for a tech center, um, but I think we're probably in the top, top four. Um, um, and again, a lot of it is based upon trying to figure out the best way to, to, to deal with that kind of thing. It's delivering the academics. And last year, Sam, we explored um, with our partner schools, we, we discussed the idea of potentially students having their academics before they came to us or after they came to us, which we really, I think, as a central Vermont community, I think it was really well supported, um, but the Agency of Ed did not support it. They, they have some statistics that show that the academics, their kids are more successful when they have it right at their technical school. Sure. Um, so therefore, it puts us back in the, how do we, how do we fund this? Yeah, how do we fund it? How do we balance it? We yeah. Um, and a, a part of the, I think if I remember, part of the discussion at the time was this idea that, you know, they were looking at changing, because that's a priority when they looked at their research, they're looking at changing the funding structure right. to help help support folks that are kind of in our vote. So yeah. we're, we're waiting to see yes. um, what comes. Yeah. Um, I and I'm hopeful because I, I know this affects more than just us and, and the governance structure, all of that, it's all kind of related. The other, other quirk that's in there um, that affects the tech centers as well as uh, the high schools is, uh, is the testing scores in science. Um, when the state is, you know, every couple of years it kind of changes around when the state testing occurs. Um, but one of the things that it did was the, the science testing happens in 11th grade. And so if the students are going over to the tech center, you know, we have about uh, about 60 students, probably about half of our senior class goes over, um, and half of our junior class goes over as well, they're not getting a year of science the year that they take that test. And so the science scores are down, and so we've been scrambling around for a couple of years trying to figure out the best way to, 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 to do that balance. You know, how do we provide that uh, science education to students that might be going off to the tech center that are literally going to be missing a year of science? Um, the department at the high school here has done a pretty good job of trying to, you know, identify which students are likely to go to the tech center and then building backwards, building more standards into the, the freshman and the sophomore science classes. But, you know, you're still trying to squeeze three years into two. Right. Yeah. So there's, there's another kind of potential problem. So either move the test to ninth grade like everybody else um, or you know, they're going to have to be able to provide some funding so we can also get a science teacher there. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know how, at the tech center, and I don't know how much that would dilute the, you know, the, the core that they're taking. Well, I think we just have to look at the structure of the day. It would, you know, we've always had a, the day structured in a particular way, um, and people get attached to that, but we can look at other models. I think the biggest barrier is transportation because a lot of our students that don't drive have to get their regular bus from their home to their partner school and then catch a bus there to come here. Yeah. So we're kind of bound by this um, partner school schedule. Yeah. And, and it's, it's quirky too because uh, a lot of the other schools, they contract out for the busing services. Yeah. So lots of times one of the reasons they come later here is they don't have enough buses to run them all at once, so they have to run the normal routes for the, the kids that go to their schools first. And then when the buses are done, then they can they've got the extras to be able to bring their students over here. So I think that's one of the reasons that you know yeah. the, the day starts later. So there's a lot of structural pieces that I could make a big impact if, if we had some changes. Yeah. I guess so. Sure. 
Um, so we mentioned the tuition increase and we've talked about the state revenue. Uh, at this point, um, whoopsie, my computer just went to sleep. Reports, um, I think I've said everything for the most part that's new other than I think you all probably received my email. Um, I've made the decision that this is my last year as director of RTCC and I know that they are in the process. Heather's been putting together a committee um, for my replacement. I'm obviously gonna work out the rest of the year and um, happy to do that and excited to do that. I love this job, I love this place. Just looking for a little more work-life balance. Um, so that's, I think, the only sort of big news. Other than that, um, you know, staffing, I don't see as much turnover right now. I, I think we're, we're pretty good. So I've got a nice staff, and I'm excited about them um, moving forward. So. Yeah, we're, we're very appreciative. I think one of the things that really stood out for me in terms of what Felicia brought is she did come in with a, a very kind of powerful vision um, that I think has made a significant number of improvements um, over at RTCC. And plus a, a tenacity with a lot of the things to actually carry it out and see it through that is rare. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've got a commender um, for, for that work and for the vision that she's had, um, which is truly amazing to kind of watch. So I do, do appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, we have interviews booked for Monday. We have uh, three candidates um, that are qualified. We had a fourth candidate, but um, they are not qualified. Um, no technical school experience. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to move forward with those three applications and continue to have the job posted at this time. Um, and may also post it in the newspaper if we determine we need additional candidates. Cool. Thank you. So I think the only other thing on the agenda, well, there's a couple of items. Uh, one, I just need a motion to approve the minutes from November 9th. I know, yeah, you are. <laughs> so I'll, I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? All right. Thank you. <coughs> and I think, Heather, you kind of touched on the opening and search committee, so I don't think oh. I need to. You, it's yeah. all good. I, I, I should also mention, though, that it is um, a diverse group. We have some teachers and we have some students. Some rap and, members. And, and yep, exactly. Um, uh, Megan um, and Sarah is going to fill in. Actually, Sarah is going to be on it. Um, and uh, also, we invited people from White River Valley, and also from um, we invited the superintendent from North River and Williamstown. He wasn't able to attend, but we're hoping for Destiny. I just wanted to let you know that we're we're trying to involve you know a, a nice group of stakeholders to do this interview. Cool. So curious, do you have industry represented in that? I don't, and I want that. Would you like to be on the committee? No, but the beta committee. <laughs> 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 um, I was just curious, because <laughs> beta was down here, right, not too long ago talking. I mean, they were. They're um, stakeholders, certainly. I mean, they're hiring a bunch, we're hiring a bunch, but. Yeah, they were. Just, I can't volunteer for anything. So. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, because we are looking for like a half day on Monday um, to d do these three interviews, and I realize that is very difficult for our employers, you know, to give us that. Um, someone else, who's the the person who's on this board who is from Bethel Mills or some other lumber organization? Uh, I don't think they're on, from Bethel Mills. Not no. on this board. Some. I don't know. I have Nathan on this board. Nathan, Nathan. 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 Yeah. Could it have been Nathan? Does it could it have been Nathan. He's our, he's our communications person. He's the one that's mm -hmm. been involved in our outreach that we've been doing to increase enrollment. 
Is that someone I should reach out to? He's got a flexible schedule. I love people with a flexible schedule. So. <laughs> I think he I asks think great questions, too. He does. Yeah. I think yeah. I put Nathan in an email to you at one point. And I may have missed it. That's totally fine. I apologize, <laughs> but I will search for it right now. And I appreciate that um, important inclusion. Thank yeah. you. J Jason Finley, at this point, uh, probably has a lot of good connections with local. So I might be rechecking in to see. Is this Nathan McNaughton? No, Nathan, Nathan Wright. Wright. Nathan Wright. W R. Mm -hmm. w -R yes. yep. We can. Send, did you send her his contact? I it's not it. did, but you sent it to me. Perfect. I found it. Perfect. All right. With that, any other questions around the search? Okay. Um, so I think correspondence and other items. I have none. Anybody else? I have a question. Um, is there an adult program still? There is not at the moment. Okay. Very good question, and that is one of the things, of, of the many things that I walked into. Uh -huh. um, getting this board into compliance was one of the things. Um, getting our facility up to date was an important thing. Getting mm -hmm. our enrollment up, and then the, the thing that hasn't quite gotten there yet for us is the adult education program. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last time that it was actually pretty successful was maybe when my mom was here. So I don't, I mean, there was some, but it wasn't full time. We we had, had discussions about it um, going back. Um, there were attempts to get it going again. We just couldn't get people to yeah. come, and we always had the question about when the uh, adult basic ed came in mm -hmm. um, yeah. in the town of Randolph, that and that was kind of siphoned off the people that we would work with through that program. Yes, that did um, definitely impact it because I think the biggest part of like when it was run by my mom is we had the adult diploma program. So yeah. that was for kid, you know, adults that needed to yeah. get their regular diploma. Now that doesn't yeah, exist in adult basic. Yeah, exactly, doesn't. exactly. Okay. So there was so. a compete. There, there was a competing. You know, you had two two organizations that were kind of doing the same thing. And, and then you've also got VTC with their continuing education department. So it's it's, I think, was a little challenging from what I've understood. But that doesn't mean there's not a need. I, I know that, for example, LNA program, we, we ran some last year. And the year um, before. And the year before. Um, in partnership with Central Vermont Medical Center, I think we could certainly do that with Gifford or, um, or even just having it on our own. But it's nice to be affiliated with a hospital. But uh, you can still audit classes, right, here as an adult? Here in the like our day programs? No, I guess not. Yeah, I guess I guess that's a question. So adults yeah. can adults can take our day programs. Um, they just have to pay tuition, and priority goes to students first. So if the program fails, the adult will not be first selected. Excuse me, Ruth. Let me know if the person has not graduated high school. The sending district still pays, mm -hmm. even if they're an adult, mm -hmm. um, even if they got their GED, it's and not a diploma. Right. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> very surprised. So was that the focus, folks who didn't have their GED or high school diploma at that point? That, that was the target of the night program, or was it? Um, when it was a diploma program, it, it was, yes, to get a regular high school diploma. And RU, they used to get those through RU. Um, I know there was also other courses, like welding and LNA. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's a lot of room for growth I could see, you know, a, a manufacturing course easily. Well, I mean, yeah. there's nothing here for advanced advanced Excel skill sets, right? That I have to yeah. try to find online classes for people. Right. And there's there's a whole list of stuff that we'd certainly be interested in. I'm, I'm laughing because if you find those, I've been trying to get my co-facility managers to take them, and you can't see, yeah. right? They're, 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 they're LinkedIn Learning, but a lot of people yeah. don't learn that way. So yeah. I mean, so it's just having something in person for yeah. certificate-based classes would be right. massive, for, at yeah. least for our organization. Just for professional That's development. Yeah, in our area skills. too. It doesn't yeah, seem like yeah. It's a lot. I think uh, there's a lot of possibilities there, and again, it's another position that <laughs> would raise tuition because it doesn't bring. Well, I shouldn't say that. But yes, I do need to say that. There, it's partially salary funded. If we had a full-time adult ed person, it would be um, salary assisted, like my position is. But you still gotta because break even. Yeah, because with those programs, you're still beholden to the faculty member has to have enough credibility and experience in in the field, right? We can't just 
and, then right. pay, and pay them equitably for yeah. you know what they're applying. It's an it's an administrator's degree. It's like a principal's degree or an assistant principal's. So so is there not a concept like an adjunct faculty like like universities have? BTC has. You don't have to have any special teaching certificate to be an adjunct faculty member at BTC. Yeah, community college. Teach classes that, there all day long, right? I mean, is there not? That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just curious, right? Because yeah. it doesn't have to be. A, the, um, the the after school for adults, I would have to check. You know, if it's if it's here here with kids, you know, we've got the highly qualified you know designation that we have to put on people right. who came from No Child Left Behind. But that's a that's something that we can check. And I think um, if they're getting paid though, from what typically happens, if they're getting paid for with any kind of grant funding from the federal government, which I think some of the reimbursement for this might be, that typically requires a highly qualified designation. Mm -hmm. So but it's a good question. We and so we're talking on. about two different things here too. Yeah. We're talking about the coordinator is the person that gets the teachers, gets the classes plan and all of that, right? And if you're talking about the teachers, no. The adult teachers do not have to have the certification. At least they never used to. Um, but there still needs to be someone who does everything. But they're, the yeah. person who's in charge of Sounds like a great thing to add to the job description for Monday. Seriously. Uh, Felicia, you know, was working on it as well. You, you know, she mentioned the, the LNA program. I'm trying to remember why it kind of dropped off the table in the site. And I think, it, thinking about it, it's probably because of COVID. Yeah. At the time. Uh, yeah. And yeah. so Control. it's, it's. I'm glad people are bringing it up because otherwise it would still kind of be, I think, a little bit out of sight. Yeah. So and it's, it's and that, yeah. and just to be completely transparent, it is going to come up from the AOE. Yep. They, they are aware that we haven't been active in for many years and. Um, it's going to be on the shoulders of the next director to, to get that up and running. It's an expectation. I'd like to see it happen again for our community. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be great. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think it's a huge asset. I wonder if it's worth getting a survey, you know, out to find out what the limitations are. <laughs> you know, I'm wondering if it's, it might be something as simple as transportation. You know, in that case, then we just get a grant and provide a bus to fix, fix the adult, adult stuff and, and drop some back. I mean, there might be some very simple things that are getting in the way or yep. people's work hours, you know. Yep. You know, if, if, it would be difficult to audit courses if you're working during the day, um, so I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as that gets going, it might be it might be worth, I'll make a note of it, is to go out and kind of survey the broader community yep. just to see what, what any kind of blockages would be there. And I think working with business, like the Stafford's adult program is very successful because Bill goes out and talks to his businesses in the community and they come to him and say, hey, I need, I need an Excel mm -hmm. uh, class and he builds it and they come, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's really building that, the partnerships with the workplaces that's going to be important. Well, I guess that's the question. I mean, who's the target, right? I mean, because it is going to be limited resources. Are we going after the folks that weren't able to complete their high school, or are we going after the folks that may have high school but need, need additional skill sets? I'm not sure. Maybe you can do both. I don't know. That'd be part of the survey is what you know, what your needs. Right. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? I think at this point. I don't think there's a need for executive session. Okay. With that, um, I'm going to uh, say we are done. Thanks. Mm -hmm.